What up, y'all? It is Monday. I don't know what the date is. Let me figure that out real quick. Ba da ba 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 da ba ba ba. Hold on. It is Monday, August the 24th, and I am Biz Bazaar, and this is Bizarre Movies That Should Be Made, the podcast. So, I've been wanting to do this podcast for a while. If you know me, you know I absolutely love movies. It's one of the biggest things in the world that I lose my shit about all the time, uh, just because I fucking, I'm fucking i insanely obsessed with movies, how they're made, making them myself, and everything between A to B when it comes to movies. So I'm always trying to learn every single thing I can about the world of filmmaking. And I've started to notice that there are a lot of badass, amazing ideas that almost just get walked over. And I think that they're all million dollar ideas, but for some reason, like nobody wants to invest in them or look into them or make them happen. So what I decided to do is I wanted to start this podcast with that particular uh, idea in mind. So the whole podcast, the whole idea of it is that we're just going to basically hang out for like maybe a half hour, hour um, every week. And we're just going to talk about dope movies that are out there that are a little bizarre, a little weird, but kind of awesome. And that definitely would make a shitload of money and that should be made. But for some reason, haven't been for whatever, whatever the reason. And then I'm going to tell you why I think um, the movie hasn't been made and what I think it will take to get it made probably every week. I'll try to remember to do that every week, but I'm going to start to get a script for these things down. But right now, this is the first podcast. This is the first episode. So it's a little bit more uncut, unrefined than what y'all are probably going to see by like episode 100. So, you know, first things first, I want to thank everybody who's even listening to this podcast because I know that it's Monday. So Mondays is usually when I feel like I should and would drop podcasts because Monday mornings, Monday afternoon, Monday nights, those are usually my most free days. That's usually when I have the most free time on my hands. So that's when I would want to make content just like this. I am happy to say that right now I am running uh, a product review business and then I'm still just a wedding DJ. So if you got a wedding out there and you need a DJ, hit up Biz Bazaar as your wedding DJ. I promise you will not regret it. But let's get on to today's topic. So I know you guys have already seen the title and y'all are probably all excited to start talking about this and hearing my thoughts on it. But uh, today we are talking about static shock. Now, if you do not know what Static Shock is, Static Shock is a 19... Let me let me look this up from actually accurate Static Shock. Now, the Static Shock that uh, most of us know is the Static Shock, the animated show, which came out in September 23rd of 2000 and went on for four years. Now, this is huge news. And the reason why I want to talk about this today is that this weekend, DC announced a huge amount of news in the DC universe. They dropped trailers for basically almost every project from now until 2021. On top of all of that, one of the biggest announcements, one of the things that almost didn't even get talked about was that the entire legendary black superhero universe that DC bought long time ago, almost 20 years ago now, um, that it is called... Um, that is called, what is, what is it? Milestone Comics? Milestone Comics. So this all black universe of characters that include things like Static Shock, Icon, Rocket, Hardware, and a number of other characters. It's all under the Milestone universe. Most of these characters have been kind of just integrated back into the universe of DC Comics. But what's happening now is that they're going to become their own universe from here on out. And that I'm pretty excited about. But in the conversation of all of that, in the conversation of that Black Captain America dropping later in 2020, potentially, or maybe even 2021, depending on when Disney decides to release uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. There is a lot of room for new black characters to make their way onto the screens and TVs and the silver screen, especially. And one of the things that I've always wondered is how the fuck Static Shock has never been made and to a movie. This is a show that, if you look at it, is still considered inside of the animated universe of the 90s cartoons, which are Batman the Animated Universe, Superman the Animated Universe. We're also talking about um, Justice League, Justice League Unlimited, and I think that there are a couple other shows that go along with that series of animated shows that dropped in the 90s all under the DC banner. Of all of those shows, I would argue that Static Shock is probably within the top five in every conversation that's ever had. So the fact that it 
doesn't have a movie is really shocking. The even more shocking thing to Static Shock is that at many points it felt like a couple of years back, maybe about five, that there was going to be a Static Shock movie with Static Shock being played as Jaden Smith. And we were all talking about how that would be the most incredible thing in the world. And I, I remember everybody saying like, yo, bro, that would be, that'd be a box office hit. That'd be incredible. That'd be incredible. And I remember saying the same thing because Static, what a lot of people don't understand is Static is kind of like the Black Peter Parker based on a lot of us grew up with watching the animated show. And in the animated show, him getting his powers is accidental. It's, it's just it happens because he's in the wrong place at the wrong time. And because of that, it makes his character extremely relatable to a lot of young kids, especially if people like me, because Virgil wasn't trying to become a superhero. He just fell into it on accident. And the success of that show, I feel like, warrants the fact that a movie should be made. Now, as I'm uh, doing this podcast right now, I did step away. I did. I am in my computer, and I went ahead and looked up Static Shock and saw if there was anything being talked about. And accordingly, two days ago, uh, there was a conversation. This is an article posted in Ver- uh, Ver- uh, Variety, uh, Variety.com, and it says that there is a new Static Shock movie may be on the way. But this this type of thing comes out every couple of years. And it's never very long. And, uh, well, this actually, this, this article's not bad. Basically, it says that the character, one of the things we're really excited about when we want to live it up is uh, Milestone Media said, Hudlin, we spoke to Jim Lee about reviving Milestone Line, and we said, look, we all know that this has been a hit comic book and a hit animated series, so it's time to spend it in those areas. Okay, so somebody might be listening out there. Okay, so, okay, if they really are thinking about making a theatrical film, then yeah, let's let's really talk about this. Uh, but there's no real, there's just a lot of talk. This is something they do in Hollywood. They talk a lot about what they'd like to do, but it's always one of those things just to keep people interested to know that you got something in the barrel, which I get, I understand. That's a, that's a good way to keep your advertising always high for your brand. Uh, but Static deserves legitimate focus put towards it. And I'm going to tell you why. Um... As long as Spider-Man doesn't have Miles Morales, there is not a young black character for young black people to connect to for the most part. And right now is the biggest time to hit that niche because really Black Panther is for more older, older black people, older black. Like if you're over the age of like 25 to 45, Black Panther is for you. But if that's the only black superhero character that you have out right now, then DC, this is the perfect time for you to go ahead and create the first black superhero character and make him a teenager. And don't do a Hulu show, because you've already seen that that doesn't work with Cloak and Dagger. And um, and the kid show that was just out before them, that was the, the all the kids together that was also on Hulu. Damn. Hulu, Marvel, kid. Oh, The Runaways, yeah. The Runaways. Both of these shows all both feature kids, and they weren't bad. But I'm saying outside of the New Mutants movie coming out, there's not a lot of teenager-focused uh, superhero films. So in that sense, Static Shock's going to get to be able to drive its own lane and create its own path. Also, the animated series sets up the whole first movie, if not the whole first three movies, without having to do much of anything at all. You have them in... I'm going to tell, tell you right now how you set up the trilogy. First movie, he gets his powers. The second movie, Gears gets his powers. Uh, Statics become more of a hero, and he's taking down more of his villain, uh, his rose gallery. And the third movie, it's either him as an adult, or it's the teenager him time traveling to see or the time is a teenager him with a time travel him from the future or another character from the dc universe in his universe for that one movie but i personally would make static shock its own lane its own movie i would not try to connect it to the dc universe i would just make it its own thing just a standalone film i think one of the biggest things i saw this weekend when i watched dc was the fact that dc looks like they're learning they the that covid gave chance for DC to stop, look at what they were doing, and figure out what exactly they wanted to do over the next couple of years. Because, man, their release schedule was all over the place. They didn't know what was going on, but the time that they've... What we just saw at DC Fandom this weekend was incredible. I mean, we're talking five solid trailers back to back to back. What felt like really legitimate projects that had nothing to do with Joker, that felt like they could stand on their own, 
and they were all interesting. And two of them were games, games that I didn't even think I would might want, but I kind of do now, including the Suicide Squad game as well as the Gotham Knights game. Because I mean, both of those sound very interesting. So I'm I'm just excited to see all this new creative content coming out from DC because I've always felt that in the long run of things, DC has the better firepower when it comes to fighting off against Marvel. But the problem has always been that DC does not like to fight the long game and they haven't been thinking the long game. They've been thinking the quick money grab game with Marvel and they need to stop doing that. But since they've already opened the door with the Joker movie and creating it in its own independent separate universe away from everything else, I I think that they should focus in on that lane and keep niching the fuck out of it. Stop trying to do a fucking shared universe outside of what you've got going with Justice League and the Zack Snyder project. I think you should let Zack Snyder fucking finish Justice League, see how it's received, because you're talking a four hour movie and I'm still game to watch it. So there you got me. You, you got something there. If it turns out great, what you need to do is capitalize on it. Go have Flash and Ben Affleck do that film that you're talking about. Make that shit like Flashpoint or something really interesting for that way you can reset some of the universe without resetting everything because you got wonder woman in there and wonder woman 84 is going to have to fall into the timeline you still got shazam fury of the gods coming out on top of black adam on top of a couple of other movies like aquaman 2 and i'm hoping you're not trying to make all these movies come back together and work because if you are you need to plan that out right now on how all of these one two three four four projects i just named we're talking um Wonder Woman 84, Justice League, potentially, how that can relate back to Shazam, Fury of the Gods, Black Adam, and Aquaman 2, which you've all already had slated. That's like five movies you've already got to contain in the universe to itself. So that should be its own universe. You need to figure that out. But then you need to go and knit yourself a path, DC, and do movies that don't matter the fuck at all to that universe, okay? They got to be just one and done, have fun movies. Hire crazy directors. Let them do whatever the fuck they want for one movie with one particular character. Let them have a blast and then kick them the hell out of there and don't bring it back up for a while because... You are going to give yourself the ability to do so much more with characters you didn't even know people would be interested to see. Like, like Zaz could easily be a DC movie and be a horror film through the eyes of a serial killer. Zaz is terrifying. I'm just, just throwing that out there. Zaz is a terrifying son of a bitch. You would have one about the Mad Hatter. Freeze could easily, Mr. Freeze could easily be his own film. Mr. Freeze does not need Batman in order to make his film interesting. I actually, Mr. Freeze would be interesting by himself, contemplating and figuring out like why he's doing all of this. If the whole movie starts with him in a jail cell and it just goes up to him getting captured by Batman, I, I would I would watch that movie called Mr. Freeze. It sounds dope. Or him plotting on some shit in an alternate universe where he kills the bat. That'd be cool. Like, this takes place in an alternate universe and an alternate Earth with an alternate world. And then just go from there. Like, you need to break the world's conscious ability to think that you can only have one of anything. Let them know that, look, this is a new world, bro. We can, we can do whatever the hell we want. It's our property and it's our franchise. So if you want to have 30 Batman, we can have it. You nerds and fans can... and, and Y'all aren't gonna care. Y'all are just gonna keep watching the movies. Y'all are gonna say, "Oh, I like this one better. I like this one." It doesn't matter though. It really doesn't. The fact that in the '90s they switched Batman four times and people think are were okay with that continuity line blows it blows my mind to me. So if that shows you how much people are willing to accept, I mean, people still don't even bring up the fact that Don Cheadle replaced Terrence Howard as fucking Iron Patriot slash war machine but you know anybody who's been watching the series can tell you yeah that's a huge thing that stands out all the time not to say that don cheeto hasn't earned his spot but it's just to say like you know it's something that stands out to us so what you need to do dc is start making movies that stand the fuck alone and they're in their own universes and they're doing their own thing just like joker but you need to do stuff like static shock static shock would be a huge project i mean Static Shock would be a huge project for a lot of reasons. The number one reason more than anything being the fact that like everybody wants to see this film. There's never going to be a film that gets more buzz or more interest except for maybe Black Green Lantern for your universe. I mean, because you don't you don't have a lot of black characters that people just know right off the bat. Nobody knows about Icon. 
Black Lightning is kind of known, but not as known as you'd expect it to be, even with the show. I mean, people know Luke Cage more than they know Black Lightning. So, yeah. Yeah. I I would say Static is your best way in. I think Static will be a great way to introduce people to, uh, uh, like, Mr. Miracle. Not Mr. Miracle. Mr. Terrific? Yeah. Like, Mr. Terrific definitely deserves his own movie. Both more than anything else. But nobody knows who Mr. Terrific is. And I think the concept of Mr. Terrific is too big for people to grasp right off the bat. If you don't know who Mr. Terrific is, Mr. Terrific is a black superhero who is basically a multi-billionaire architect designer who designs these little thing called the Terrific Pods or uh, they're like little, they're little, they're little balls of like data that he can float on and do all kinds of stuff. But yeah, Mr. Terrific is a self-made millionaire whose photographic memory, Olympic athlete and skill and master of martial arts has made him a, rena- a renaissance man. But his, his basically uh, millionaire and photographic abilities have also allowed him to create a lot of future tech. So one of the things he's created is the Terrific, uh, the terrific Balls. And they have the ability to do all kinds of stuff, including time travel, protect him, move matter around him, all, all kinds of crazy stuff. So, yeah, that's one of the characters that long term would I would love to see on the screen. But introducing people to Mr. Terrific is going to take time, even though he was in Arrow, people still don't know enough about him to to really bring him in and make him a, a, a staple movie character. Like he just he's going to need a little bit more character development. But I personally think he could be one of the, the the characters that makes the most money because there is no basis for him ever built there's no set standard for him there's nothing out there that sets the tone or the bar for who he is as a character so if you can bring it in and there's there you have no bar you can do whatever you want it's just like with guardians of the galaxy when you have no bar you're much more free to come in and do whatever you want with that uh with that product with that like with those characters because people don't know anything about them so there's no already preconceived notions about what they're about to see with static shock you got a bar you gotta hit that shit. I'm sorry. With Static Shock, you you gotta. There's a bar you must hit. It's gotta be hit. Static Shock is a is a key element because Static has so many easy things that you can do. Perfect example is that. Look, we're gonna go look up Static Shock season one. Okay, Static Shock season one has 13 episodes, which most shows animated usually do in their first episode. The first episode, aka A Shock to the System, has a great, easy, simple premise. Uh, Virgil's at the wrong place at the wrong time and is transformed by a strange gas into a master of electromagnetic uh, magnetic energy and decides to use his powers for good. At the same time, a number of other kids are also transformed and have powers. So now you've opened up the door for everything. He could have a bully at the early scenes of the movie. And then this whole uh, call to action scene happens. He has the gas. He wakes up the next morning and first starts to experience his powers. Literally, you could just copy and paste Spider-Man, Tobey Maguire with a black character and less younger actors. Don't, don't pick 25-year-old actors to play... 16 year olds it's very noticeable these days so just you know pick pick people who who meet these roles um and go from there if you guys really need to understand what you need to do dc go watch the first season of static shock again it's perfect it's it's really a great season to for character introduction and introducing a whole world of villains based in his neighborhood so he gets to deal with people who are not fucking big time villains big time troublemakers every once in a while he might deal with a crazy person for a tag team up situation with others but for the most part this guy works solo dolo and that's the whole thing we need to keep it as small as we can and focused on static because i think that long term Static could easily get you a three franchise deal or a three a three movie deal for sure, potentially a trilogy, and will allow you to be able to throw him into like a Young Justice movie or a Justice League movie, or not a Justice League, a Teen Titans group, and he'd fit right there. And now, boom, you can get another two movies out the kid. Boom, now you got five movies. That's how you build a franchise, okay? Like Static is how you introduce characters like Raven, 
Like, you actually need to start focusing in on building your whole team division, starting with static. You need to start with static, and then you need to introduce, like, five random teams. Like, even the, the Mexican twins from Teen Titans, I would take, at this point, getting their own movie. I mean, you know, make them 2020, maybe a guy and a girl or something. I don't know, but, you know, make them 2020, and then give them a live-action movie of two twins that got to hold hands in order to run. Well, maybe not that. I mean, not that, because that, well, they did do a lot of cool stuff, too. I don't know. Maybe pick one of the other characters from Teen Titans, but give them a spinoff. Let them do their thing. Like, Bumblebee. Bumblebee could easily, well, nah. Nah, because people will just call her Black uh, Wasp. You don't need that extra hate if you're going to make Static first. You got to call these shots smart. So I would go Static. Hmm. Who's on the Titans West team? You need somebody who hasn't been around in a while. Or somebody you can reimagine. Ooh, you know who you really could do? Uh, If you really wanted to get in there, I would do I would do static and then I would do a Terra movie. Really, really throw people the fuck off because they won't know what to expect with that. Because, again, you're not trying to make movies that fucking make waves. You're trying to make movies that, like, people are just caught off guard and they're interesting. You get three or four of those, then you put everybody together to make something interesting that's a big team movie. And now you got something. Ooh, or a Starfire movie, Beast Boy movie, Kid Flash. Nah, don't do Kid Flash. You already got enough problems trying to get your Flash movie under fucking control. Uh, not Wonder Girl either. Your Wonder Woman series is doing just fine. Don't do Cyborg if you're going to do Static. Too many black films at the same time will make people think that you're just pandering. I would say do Beast Boy. Honestly, I would do Static and then do Beast Boy. Beast Boy is a nice, different character. I will let Cyborg stay on the Justice League, and then I will let these guys become their own team where Static takes Cyborg's spot on the Teen Titans. That's... That's what I would recommend. I think that if you if you set it up like that, that would make Static a fucking a six year, seven year, ten year situation as a movie franchise, and people would love to see that. Static deserves a franchise, a long, at least a trilogy about the trials and tribulations of a young black kid falling into powers. Because I can guarantee that if Static Shock doesn't get a movie, uh. Y'all are going to feel really dumb once Marvel gives Miles Morales a movie. Because eventually they're going to kill Peter Parker. And then they're going to have Miles Morales come in. Because you know what's going to do better than, than Peter Parker Spider-Man? Miles Morales Spider-Man. Go look at, go look at the numbers for, for the last animated Spider-Man movie. And imagine if it had Marvel and Disney's money behind it. It, it would knock off box, box house numbers too. And it would give Sony a chance to go do something with Peter Parker again. Which they'd probably really love. So... You know, this is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that you do Static before they get the chance to really introduce a teen black character, uh, DC. And then from there, you just focus in on introducing a lot of teen movies that make money and then do a teen Justice League. While you have your adults doing a gritty Zack Snyder type of situation. Because I get that you're after the teen money and you're not sure how to make that happen. So what you should do is you should separate, divide, and conquer. If you already know that you're going to be putting HBO, Zack Snyder level, dark content out there, just go ahead and go full circle with that. Go all the way with it and make that just a niche thing on HBO Max. And, and just funnel that. Make certain ones uh, able to be released. But for the most part, what I would say, I would say that you need to focus in on getting that teen market before Marvel fucks around and fucks you up in that market too. Because if they get the adults and the teens consistently there every couple of months, you're fucked, bro. I'm sorry. They're going to be killing y'all. Six movies a year is what they're looking at eventually. Because I could see them easily making a young teen, like a young Avengers movie with like Miss Marvel, uh young patriot i mean they're gearing up to make teen content i don't know if they're gonna disney plus it or they're gonna you know cinema drop house it but it feels like that's what the long-term goal is marvel wants adult content that's like not too adult kids can still kind of go see it like teenager adult content but then they want eight to like 16 content like like it's for teenagers like hunger games level content 
It's not too up there. There's not too many adult jokes, but there's just enough action and like not crazy violence that adults could watch it and not get bored. But mostly teenagers are there every weekend taking their little runaway problems to get away from mom and dad thing to to like at, at the movie situation. That's what they're after because they know that's a really marketable crowd. Those kids are always at the movies every other weekend spending somebody else's money. That's guaranteed. That's guaranteed cash flow. So why not consistently make products that are built for them? And the Runaways and Cloak and Dagger didn't do what they were expecting it to do. And I think that they saw that. That's kind of why they didn't even worry about trying to keep them on board. But what they should focus in on, DC should focus in on taking that crowd away from Marvel before it ever happens. Which is why I'm saying the Static Shock movie is so vital. Just hit them over the head and show them right out of the gate that you're just better than them. Because you're willing to put it all on a black kid. Right out of the back. If we fail, we fail with this kid. But I don't think we're going to fail. I think that the Flash would, I think that Static Shock would be as big as Flash or Green Arrow. If not bigger. And I don't think you should do it as a show. I think you should absolutely make it into a movie. You see, a show is going to take too much time and you're going to do too much world building. And eventually you're going to get into the problem the Flash is having, which is you're just copy and pasting shit from season one over and over again, hoping people don't notice. And that's not what you want. Nobody wants to see Virgil for the next six seasons fighting every other villain that comes into town for any other reason in this little small universe where he'll never get the chance to meet anybody or do anything really interesting we'd rather just have a movie all right nobody wants nobody wants that consistency of the same old same old just i would rather spend the entire budget of a season of a show on one movie for static shock what is that like 75 million 80 million let's spend that whole amount just on the show like just on the movie let's see what happens i think that static could do it for under 50. i think static static could easily flip a 50 million dollar budget into something around 350 to 500 million and i really don't doubt those numbers and i'm gonna tell you why i believe that static is uh static is gonna fill a void of movies for not only teens but black people there are not a lot of movies coming out. And based on the schedules, there's not a lot of movies for black people, especially in the, the superhero world. So it would be great if somebody built a movie for young black people. And since nobody's doing that, it's its own perfect niche market. But because young black people will be interested to see it, people my generation, so what is that, 25 or 27, 28, 29, 30s, early 30s, would still be interested to see it. There's a wide variety who would want to see a Static Shock movie because Static has a large fan base behind it because of the animated show. So I would capitalize on that before you do anything else because an anime, like you, I think that the thing I wonder is that Everybody keeps trying to plan out these full-scale universes. What if we just stopped doing that and just went back to just making hit movies? You know, what if we just took a step back and we just focused in on, hey, let's just make this movie pop. And if we get three of these in a row, two, two, if we get two of these in a row, then let's talk about getting somebody else who's also got two in a row. Like we can't do a team movie until everybody's got two movies underneath their belt and they're solid as a character in their development. At least in the process of growing as a character. You know, I think that's what made the Marvel movies more interesting. Although Cap wasn't in his second movie, Cap's second movie felt like the Avengers. So he was, I I, I would say, yeah, Cap's second movie felt like the Avengers. Like it was like a a solid 50% of the movie was based on Cap trying to understand what was going on around him and how much things had changed, which we liked. I liked, I loved it. I think, I think that's what enjoyed, made the movie a little bit more interesting because everybody else had really had enough screen time. Cap, Bruce Banner didn't have a lot of screen time. Black Widow basically was in Iron Man 2, so that's technically her first movie, just like it was Iron Man's second. Iron Man's character development in the second movie really wasn't much more than it was in the first movies, and he's pretty much the same guy when it comes to the third movie. I mean, when it comes to fucking The Avengers. So, yeah, we're going to go ahead and... No, but yeah, I would say that you got to have at least two movies of some kind. You got to either be featured in somebody else's movie or you got to have two movies on your own before you can start talking about being in a a team up movie with with a character. Because these characters that DC's throwing in there just don't have character development. And that's what makes people not give a shit. But you can't try to do that in a team up movie. Team ups are not about trying to grow characters in that moment. Team ups are about teaming up. Big threat, real problem. Let's team up. Stop it. 
That's the whole goal. Stops right there. It's not deeper than that. It's not more complicated than that. That is the entire purpose of team-up films. So with Static, Static shouldn't do team-up films for his first three movies. It should be all about letting us get to know and understand and kind of fall more interested in this character called Static Shock. And then in his like second, I would say, I would say in the second film, don't introduce a new character Take one of the characters from the first film, have their powers manifest, and then have Gears' powers come in. And then in the third film, if the first films have done solid numbers, don't market it until the third fucking trailer, but put in some type of high-profile DC character. I don't care if it's a black character or a white character. It could be fucking Green Arrow. Just put in somebody to acknowledge the fact that Static is a part of a bigger universe in the third movie. And then just leave it at that. Just leave it at that. I promise you Static Shock will do the numbers. That's how you do it, all right? First movie's origin story, you fucking focus in on it. Have him have a bully in the first 15, 20 minutes. His bully gets powers, he gets powers. They're going to fight it out at the end. It's simple, it's obvious. Everybody knows it's coming, but it's a duh. But the other subplots to this are Gears is going to start to manifest powers. Some of the other students are going to start to manifest powers. Static building his suit. Static doing the fucking garage or the little lid thing. Like where he he fucking floats and does everything on the lid until Gears at the end of oh no let's have Gears in the second film give him the fucking do 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 the disc yeah let's let's save that for the second film I want him to show him all I want him to show up all busted but as like a real hero to uh, the final fight for this so yeah the first film you know basic suit suit kind of almost gets destroyed but you know he always you know how how they ended in superhero movies uh, who do you think you are. I'm static shock and you know hits him with the full the full wave and he starts to really starts to see like the magnitude of his powers the second movie will have his powers like on the fritz or something or him not believing in him I don't know we'll have some kind of situation where we have some girl introduced that can nullify his powers or if he loses control of his emotions um he's starting to just have haywires because of his hormones or emotions whatever it be whatever it be and then have a new villain pop up maybe it's the girl he's dating maybe it's a girl that he like broke up with maybe it's someone who felt ignored at the high school i would let this be like uh, this would be like his junior year yeah and then the last movie would be a senior year like him about to graduate and don't have him giving the graduation speech. Like, don't be cheesy. We're not asking for the world here. All I'm saying is that the third move, the second movie has to be about him and Gears. Their relationship getting strained because Gears getting power and him feeling like Static is afraid of him getting losing the spotlight to Gears. And that's not the case. He's just worried about Gears with all this new power and tech. And maybe you could even have that be like Brainy. Ooh, see, that would be a good side villain to have going on right there. I would have somebody like Brainiac. No, because if you introduce Brainiac, you got to introduce fucking Superman or some part of Superman or Lex Luthor or somebody to deal with that Brainiac problem. Because if gear in the show when they had the gears of Brainiac problem, they also had Superman. So I don't want to do that. Mm, Who else could be a fucking... Maybe Mongol? Nah, you know what? We'll come back to it. Don't think about it too much. We're going to come back to that. We're, all we're going to say is this. This is what you do. For the second movie, it's got to be about the drama between the two boys. And them feeling like the fact that Gears is starting to show powers. And Gears is Virgil's best friend. If you've never seen Static Shock, oh, the person I keep referring to as Gears is uh, Virgil's best friend. Who I forget his real name. But basically, halfway through, I think the second or third season, he starts to develop powers, and he's, he ends up uh, realizing that his power is that he's a techno genius. He can organically kind of like understand technology and build and remake it into better technology. That's just that's just what he does. So that was pretty dope. I always thought that that was actually the better power of the two powers because he had the unlimited ability to constantly. Oh, Richie! Yeah, Richie was his homie. So Richie, so they're like these are these are some of the characters in the first season. You've got Static, Richie, his dad, his sister, Robert is his dad, Sharon is his sister. You got Rubber Band Man, which is I think his bully. No, no, his our, his bully is Ebon, which is uh, the leader of a gang that he fights against. And it's like, yo, that's not look, look. Ebon would still make a great villain. 
Boom. Yeah. Yeah, I remember Ebon. Yeah, let Ebon be the, the still the same villain. Yeah, let Ebon be the same villain. So you have him for the first the first movie. Then in the second movie, you either have Rubber Band Man or you have uh, not Rubber Band Man. You have some of the other characters kind of figure out which one's gonna be him. Have Ebon break out and lead the squad. Then in the third movie, you just have him tag team with somebody else, and it's all it's all groovy. Look, y'all, all I'm saying is is that this is a movie that definitely deserves to be made, and the fact that it hasn't been made is quite shocking. So, if y'all agree with me, make sure y'all, y'all drop your comments in the... Make sure y'all drop your comments on this podcast. I would love to hear y'all thoughts on if there should be a Static Shock movie, why there shouldn't be a Static Shock movie, and then what else y'all would like to hear from this podcast. My name is Biz Bazaar, and I'm going to see you guys next Monday for another bizarre movie that should be made. Deuces. Ugh. All right, guys, I will see you guys next Monday for another bizarre movie that should be made. Peace. 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 Peace.